Alright guys, let's do the SE 2020 versus the iPhone 12. So, $399, $830 I believe for the iPhone 12. That's what it was on Apple's uh, you know website. Uh, after tax, it was like $887, so just do know that. Um, so yeah, so mid-range flagship. So let's go ahead and get started. So taking a look at the hardware, um, both of these phones are glass. Uh, in metal phones uh, which is really nice I definitely think the iPhone 12 looks so much better uh, Apple has went with sort of a dated design with the SE 2020 which was really the the discussion when it first came out was they went with such an old design basically an iPhone 7 8 design uh, with this phone uh, which is kind of unfortunate uh, because it really shows in 2020 so going around these sides you have a gigantic power button which is something that I really love on the iPhone your power button on the SE 2020 you turn it around we have your volume rocker and we have your mute vibration switch on both of these guys as well down below lightning cable also have our uh, stereo speakers on both of these phones the SE is definitely a bit thinner but honestly it doesn't feel that much lighter than the iPhone 12 the iPhone 12 actually feels really light uh, this still has a weight to it so they feel about the same weight honestly um, so that is pretty surprising uh, so when you get to the back you'll see that you have the really nice trendy camera module setup dual camera setup flash on the SE you have just a single camera flash Apple logo both uh, in the middle that's the only real distinction with the SE 2020 is that the Apple logo was moved to the middle that's how you can tell from an iPhone uh, 8 alright so when you turn both phones around this is where you notice you know the iPhone SE's uh, kinda dated design you got these huge chunky bezels uh, right here you have the uh, not face ID touch ID up front on the 12 you have the face ID uh, you have the notch but much slimmer bezels uh, as we can see here but what I like about the SE 2020 is it's a very compact phone uh, so if you like small phones I just really love uh, this phone I love small phones I wish uh, they made more of them but that's why I'm excited about the 12 mini uh, I think that's gonna be a really nice phone to have uh, as well so if you don't like the design of the SE 2020 wait for the 12 mini to come out that is gonna be uh, really really nice now let's go ahead and talk about the display. So you have a Retina IPS display on the SE 2020. It's a 4.7 inch display, 750 by 1334, 326 for the PPI. And you also have a 6.1 inch display on the 12. It's a Super Retina XDR <laughs> OLED display. And it is a 1170 by 2532 resolution with 460 for the PPI. So both displays actually look uh, really good. Now, obviously, the 12 display is going to uh, look better. Colors are really nice on this display. Text is going to be slightly sharper on the 12 as well since you have that higher PPI count. But I'm telling you, the SE's 2020's display, since it's so small, it just looks really good still um, colors are still pretty vibrant on here it's not a bad display by any means uh, so I was really surprised by that it gets fairly bright uh, as well which is something that I really like so I don't have any issues with the SE's 2020 display the only thing you know is the you know huge bezels and stuff like that but overall as far as display quality uh, it is still a very nice display of course you're just not gonna get those deep blacks the benefit of having the OLED display of course is you can put the dark mode on on the uh, 12 and you'll be able to save a little bit uh, more battery life uh, on this phone uh, so you can put a dark wallpaper on here so you, those are the benefits of the OLED display but they're both actually pretty nice displays both of these phones are running the latest version of iOS iOS 14 and uh, yeah so the experience is super smooth on both now you have the gestures versus the home button to me that is a personal preference I know people that really don't like the swiping and all that stuff they prefer the you know classic home button so if that's you you know the SE is your device to go to but everything is still here your widgets and stuff there's no limitations because of the screen now obviously widgets are gonna kinda be a little cramped compared to on the 12 
uh, so do note that uh, but as far as iOS running it just runs really uh, smoothly on both like I said you have the Apple A13 chip versus the A14 chip and let's go ahead and do a quick little speed test before we get into uh, any benchmarks and stuff like that uh, so let's go ahead and open up YouTube look like my SE got it there Instagram look like the 12 got it there let's go ahead and try subway surfer if I could find it the 12 got it there as you can see it's it's not really it's like what a hair faster let's try temple run a little stutter on the SE as you can see no real difference in speed I can't really count that as a real difference obviously the 12 is a little bit faster let's go ahead and run the Geekbench and see uh, what kind of scores we get uh, here and we'll be back all right so we can see the Geekbench scores and as you can see a kind of significant difference uh, with the multi-core score on the 12 in the 4000s and the SE is in the 2000s here but as we saw with the you know real world uh, speed test uh, it's not a huge difference here so uh, both phones are definitely very fast so of course both phones do not have any micro SD support uh, both phones come with 64 gigs of storage which is kind of an L for the uh, 12 because considering the price it should be 128 gigs it should not be 64 uh, gigs with a phone that you know costs half as much at 400 bucks so that really does not uh, make any sense but uh, you have 3 gigs of RAM on the SE2020 you also have 4 gigs of RAM uh, on the 12 uh, but as far as performance, multitasking, you might have better multitasking on the um, the 12 if you are very heavy. But, you know, like just like that, you saw, it'll keep applications open. But it should. Usually the SE does a pretty good job keeping applications open. Yeah, so, again, that extra, you know, gig of RAM, uh, that extra gig of RAM will... Come in handy if you're a hardcore multitasker. All right, so we're in PUBG and we shouldn't see any difference in graphic uh, settings here. So let's just go ahead, check. We're on Ultra HD. Let's see, that's as high as we can go. Frame rates are Ultra on the 12. Yeah, we can do it. I don't have it downloaded on the SE, but we have the same settings. So if you go to Ultra HD will have the same settings pretty much so you will be able to game at the same settings uh, no problem so uh, obviously obviously um, what is going on obviously you will be playing on a smaller display now I don't knock the SE for having a smaller display because you really might want a smaller display uh, so that's not an issue but I do think colors in on this OLED display uh, look better when you're gaming than an IPS display and having that kind of more edge-to-edge -edge display immersive experience is cool But then again, you have the notch on the iPhone as opposed to having no notch no intrusion as you can see it kind of cuts into the display there It's probably something you can do in settings, but um, Yeah, it, again the gaming experience comes down to you But it's going to be pretty much identical when you're playing games besides display and image quality Let's go ahead and check out speaker quality and see if there's going to be a huge difference in sound. They both have stereo speakers.
So both of these phones are very loud. They both have very good bass presence. The iPhone 12 is obviously going to be a little bit louder. Now it's not by a ton, but it is noticeable. Yeah, there's just slightly a bit more bass presence is really the main thing that you notice. It's just a little bit more bass, but both of these phones are pretty loud. So if you're in a loud environment, you'll be able to hear these phones, no problem. All right, let's talk about some additional features. So both of these phones have an IP rating. So if you get them wet, they won't break immediately, uh, which is something that is always awesome to have. Uh, they both have NFC, of course, with the Apple Pay. So that is there. Now, the biggest difference is the Face ID versus Touch ID. So I was kind of expecting Apple to get rid of the notch and go with a sort of touch ID with the fingerprint scanner and they did not they decided to stay with it uh, which is pretty strange but it has still has face ID it still works great it's very accurate it's very fast but it's not as fast as having touch ID so with touch ID you pull out your pocket you already kind of know where to put your finger and with face ID you have to look you have to look and then unlock and then swipe with this one it already does the animation for you so you just hold down and you're already in so it is slightly uh, faster especially in these days where you have to wear a mask you have to pull your mask down to use the face ID so touch ID is very handy these days actually even though it's kind of you know older let's talk about the cameras so you have a 12 megapixel sensor on the SE you shoot 4k video 2430 or 60 FPS you have a 7 megapixel selfie 1080p on the 12 you have a 12 megapixel standard and you have a 12 megapixel ultra wide 4k 2430 or 60 fps on the front facing camera you have a 12 megapixel selfie you also get 4k 2430 or 60 fps basically if you got like an se 2020 and you were like let me upgrade to the 12 because the cameras are going to be so much better I'm telling you from these photos, it's not the case. It is not a huge, huge difference. I can barely tell the difference between uh, both of these cameras. Now, what you will notice is that the night mode on the iPhone uh, 12 is there and it is non-existent on the SE. Uh, so that is one thing to note. So if you take a lot of photos at night, uh, then, you know, or if you find yourself in a situation, a low light situation, then uh, it's nice to have the 12. It's also nice to have uh, the ultra wide camera as well. But if those two things don't really concern you, these two cameras are very, very evenly matched. I don't think it's a significant jump uh, from the SE to the 12. And that goes from the front facing camera as well. I actually prefer the selfie on the SE. I prefer like the cooler uh, colors that it gave me. But uh, overall, the cameras are really great on both. Uh, video is super solid on both as well as you can see. So very good cameras. I wouldn't jump uh, and get the 12 if you have an SE 2020 because of the camera. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about battery life. So you have a 1,821 milliamp battery, 18 watt fast charging on the SE. You also get wireless charging as well. On the 12, you have a 2,815 milliamp battery, 20 watt fast charging, wireless charging as well. Basically, this is a big difference, which I think is a pretty good upgrade. You get around four hours uh, and 30 minutes of screen on time if you're using it hard. Uh, maybe around five hours if you're a light user on the SE. With the iPhone, you can easily squeeze out six hours and 30 minutes. So you are getting a much better battery life to me, really all day battery life on this phone. This phone, uh, you kind of, if you use it kind of hard, you're going to be running to the charger, um, you know, close to the end of the day. So you do have much better battery life on the 12. So uh, that is pretty much it. So I really like the 12, uh, the price point. The only thing I don't like is the design is a little bit old and dated, but this phone will be getting updates. Well, both of these phones will be getting updates for years and years to come, uh, which is really nice. So what do you guys think? Be sure to let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one.